So you tried getting funded in 2023, but you failed. And I will tell you the exact reason why you failed. And I will teach you in this video how you can actually get funded and make consistent profits in 2024. I will provide you with the strategy and I will give you tips on how you can achieve this. I am currently managing four funded accounts and I'm making consistent profits every single month. The proof is on my Instagram and on my Twitter. So if you want to check it out, well and good. So now the very common thing, the very common thing that you're failing the challenge is because you're not sticking to one strategy. Now you see that this is a different story when you have a funded account, but during the challenge phase, I want you to stick to one strategy. I don't care if you fail the challenge. I don't care if you pass the challenge, but if you stick to one strategy, it's going to build discipline and it's going to make you trade that strategy even better, right? Um, first of all, you have to backtest your strategy. You must have a trading model that actually works and is profitable in the long run, right? You don't have to, you don't have to backtest for like a month and then decide that you want to trade with the strategy you need at least one year of data without that you will not be confident in your trading strategy and you're going to fail the challenge most of the time so rule number one you have to stick to one strategy and you have to back test and forward test and uh, you know make it profitable if it's not even profitable there's no point in uh, purchasing the challenge and then trading with that strategy because you're going to lose money in this video i will teach you an exact strategy that you can use it's very simple but we'll get onto that later in the video the number two reason why you cannot pass your challenge is because you are following so many youtubers so many trading gurus and you're mixing everything up I want you to only follow one or two trading YouTubers or gurus, whatever you want to call them. If you don't want to follow me, well and good. Go ahead and unfollow me, but only follow one or two max. All right. You can either follow me or someone else or follow other two people and forget about me. It's all up to you. But I guarantee you what I teach on this channel is by my heart and I care about you guys. All right. So. This is very common, guys. You have to unfollow every single person out there, yeah, every single guru out there. Just follow one or two because once you start following every other guru, you know, you're going to mix everything up. Every guru teaches in a different style. My style of teaching is going to be different from other people. So if you start learning from every single guru out there, uh, you're just going to mix up so many things and probably it's going to be really, really bad for you. So now let's talk about how you can actually pass the challenge right uh first of all you have to treat trading like it's a video game now this might sound dumb but you have to become emotionless all right you don't have to worry about failing the challenge because once the worrying starts in your mind it's going to affect your psychology and you're going to over trade or revenge trade or risk more than you usually have to do and you'll fail the challenge so treat the challenge like it's a demo account or a demo challenge right you must spend the money that is not important to you so when you purchase a challenge the amount that you spent to purchase a challenge should be worthless to you it should not matter if you lose that money or if you get that money back all right so that is the very key thing guys because our brain is trained uh, to go in a fear mood whenever we 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 have to worry about m losing money right but what if you don't worry about losing money what if you don't worry about losing the challenge right that's gonna greatly affect your psychology and it will improve the chances of you winning the prop firm challenge so now here's a simple strategy simple trading strategy that you can use forever you don't need anything else and i have taught this method before on my youtube channel and i want to teach this again and again so you guys can get familiar with what i am teaching and how i see the markets in my own way now remember one thing guys price only does two things and it does nothing else all right price only has two ways to move it takes out highs and lows and then it rebalances itself into a fair value gap or it goes into a fair value gap and then goes up ahead and takes out the highs and the lows. So let me show you what I mean by this. So let's say that there is a high, right? And over here, what do we have is a fair value gap in the discount. Now, over here, you can see that we have taken out the high, right? Now, the next point where the price will be going and it should be going is this fair value gap so in other words any high or low 
is considered to be an external range liquidity, right? And any fair value gap in the discount or premium or generally any fair value gap is considered to be internal range liquidity, right? So in other words, we move from external range liquidity into internal range liquidity and from internal range liquidity into external range liquidity but for this strategy we're gonna only move from external to internal we're not we're not gonna be moving from internal to external because it requires a greater understanding of the higher time frame auto flow right so here is the strategy right i am first of all looking at the daily time frame and i, and I have marked out my daily high and my daily fair value gap in the discount remember that fair value gap must not be filled and it should be untouched so we have a fairly gap below the 0 0.5 level of this range from this low to this high we use our fibonacci right and we get the discount so that is going to be our draw on liquidity right we go from external to internal remember that now on the daily time frame we took out the high so that is a plus one now we have to drop down to one hour time frame remember that now once we drop down to one hour time frame we are looking for a market structure shift on the one hour time frame right this is going to confirm that now we're going to head towards that fair value gap in the discount towards that draw on liquidity right on the daily time frame now once you get the market structure shift now that's where things get a little complicated but i'm gonna make that make this as easy as possible you have to look at the economic calendar and we want to trade on the days where there is high impact news right so there are two things that's gonna happen during the high impact news day first of all we have to only trade on the days when there's high impact news so let's say there is a news at 8 30 a.m new york time right you have to trade after 10 or 15 minutes of the news event so basically that would be 8 40 or 8 45 a.m new york time let's say there's a news at 9 30 a.m right so you have to trade after a 9:40 or 9:45, and similarly, if there's a news after 10, then you can trade after 8:30 open. So basically, that's gonna be 8:40 or 8:45, right? And what if there are news on 8:30, 9:30, and 10:30, right? Then you have to avoid that day because the price is gonna be messed up, right? So usually want to look for trade after 10 or 50 minutes so once you get the market structure shift you're looking for a high impact news day right now during the high impact news there's going to be a pd array right so after market structure shift there's going to be a pd array probably a fair value gap right so price during the high impact news can go into fair value gap once it does that all you have to do is drop down to five minute time frame so we go from daily to one hour to five minute and on the five minute now we're going to look for another market structure shift right so over here we're going to get a market structure shift now this is going to be our target level uh the lower first take profit level so remember this this is our high time frame draw on liquidity right on the one hour time frame we got a market structure shift that one hour market structure shift confirms our bias all right now once we have a confirmed bias we are looking for price to go into the one hour pd array during a high impact news event or in between the high impact news event right it can happen within 15 minutes or max 20 minutes so once the high impact news starts it's gonna go ahead and go into pd array now once that happens you drop down to five minute time frame and you look for another market structure shift now once you have your market structure shift you take your entry from the pd array that was formed on the five minute time frame and you t your first take profit level is going to be the um last low that was formed before price went into the one hour PD array. I hope that makes sense. So this is gonna be a first take profit level. And then you can look for liquidity sweep, market structure shift, right? Then another liquidity sweep, market structure shift until your high time frame PD array is, or sorry, your draw on liquidity is hit. So there's another way that price can act during high impact news even, and this is how it will do. So instead of going into the PD array, what will happen is before the news, price will create a high right so we have a market structure shift our bias is confirmed and now we have a buy side liquidity so there's going to be pd array but for now it's not going to matter now during the high impact news what can happen is price can take out buy side liquidity right so during the high impact news price will take out the buy side liquidity remember that highs and lows are also considered pd arrays 
it's not only auto blocks or probability gaps, highs and lows are also considered PD at risk, right? So over here, price takes out buy side liquidity. Now what we were waiting for, similarly is gonna be, we would be looking for a five minute market structure shift after liquidity sweep. And once we get that, we take our entry from the extreme probability gap, a breaker block and auto block, whatever suits you well. Now your first take profit level is gonna be this low here. Now from here onwards, what you're looking for is one hour buy side liquidity purges, right? So price will create a buy side liquidity purge, drop down to five minute time frame once again, target this, right? You keep on doing that until your high time frame draw on liquidity is hit. And the best time to sell would be in the premium. Once price gets below the 0 0.5 level, right? It's, it's sorry, from here onwards. Once price gets to like below the 0 0.5 level here, right? Then it's not best to keep on selling. You must get, you try to get your entry above the 0 0.5 level because that's when price is in the premium and the probabilities are high. So very simple guys, this is all you need. If you want to make this even more mechanical, right? You can go for one to two risk to reward ratio per trade. Once one to two is RR is hit, you get out of the trade and you go back home and you look for another set setup. Similarly, this works on weekly time frame as well. So if you are a swing trader, right? Or a high time frame trader, this applies to weekly. So similarly, we're looking to, similarly, we will be looking at the weekly time frame, right? And after a liquidity sweep, we will look, drop down to four hour time frame. And after that, will drop down to 15 minutes time frame. If you wanna be an intraday trader, you can try the four hour, 15 minutes and one minute time frame combination. It works as well, similarly as I showed you here. So let me give you guys a couple of examples and uh, then I will end the video. All right, everybody, so here is example number one and you'll be surprised by how easy it is, right? So over here, you can see we have taken out a high on the daily time frame. Now, where do you think the price is going to go to? I'll give you five seconds to so decide. Over here, where is it going to go? Now, if you looked at this fair value gap, then you are absolutely right because this fair value gap is in the discount and also it is untouched and it is, uh, you know, mm, not filled. So, after price took out external range liquidity, we have to drop down to one hour time frame to confirm that price will not go into this fair value gap. So now if we drop down to one hour time frame, you're gonna clearly see that over here, we took out the external range liquidity and after that, what you see is we created this low here and price broke out of this um, level, giving us a market structure shift. And over here, we have a fair value gap, right? So price went into this at around let's drop down to five minute time frame and see what happened here and as you can see that after like 8 30 this is where was the news event right at 8 30 what we had was a purge on the liquidity here we went into the pd array which was the fair value gap and after that what we have here is you can see we have a market structure shift here body closes here now what do we have we have this auto block here and look at this to the tick price test this level here and after that our first take profit level is gonna be this low here and you can see that the delivery of price is so algorithmic, algorithmic you're gonna be surprised so let's drop down to one hour time frame and see what happens afterwards so this is our high time frame draw on liquidity right and we're gonna see how price goes into this level so there's a buy side liquidity purge here, another push down. Now there's another buy side liquidity purge over here and we go down. And here's another buy side liquidity purge and we go down. And here's another buy side liquidity purge and we go down, right? And we get another buy side liquidity purge here or oh, a massive purge on here. And after that price goes into our high time from dawn liquidity. So very simple you can do this forever as long as the high time from drawing is not hit look for buy side liquidity purges right and look for market structure shifts on the five minute time frame and take your entries let's move on to the next example now okay so this is going to be a little complicated example because you will not get clean price action like you know every single time so i want you to get familiar 
to with these uh, hot examples, right? So over here, what do we have? We have this big fair value gap on the daily time frame, and over here, if you can look at it here, we took out this external range liquidity. Now, before we took out this low here, and we had a tiny bit of fair value gap, and that was filled. So you can see the precision here. Now we took out this low, and we only have this fair value gap from this low to this. Uh, sorry, from this high to this low. So that is going to be our draw on liquidity, right? Now, going to the one hour time frame here, what you can see is, let me remove this quickly. Okay. So we got a market structure shift here, right? And we had this auto block here. And look at when price came into this PD array. This was going to be around 8.30, right? And price should be around this PD array at 8.30. But our anticipation was that price will fill in this variability gap or this auto block and it never happened. So now here's how we could have entered. We would have waited for another high impact news day. And as you can see that around, let's go forward here. Okay, over here, what you can see is we had this variability gap, right? Now, and we also had this high over here. Now let's drop down to five minute time frame and see what exactly happened. Now over here, you can see that we have a fair value gap, right? And inside this fair value gap, the news was at 8.30. So we wanna trade after a purge or price is still in the PDRA. So price is still in the PDRA, that is a fair value gap. And look at this, at 8.30, we had a purge on the sell side. And afterwards, what do we have? We have a shift in the market structure, right? Now, this is our auto block. So this would have been our entry. Our long would go here, stop just below the 0 0.5 level of this wick, right? Remember that? If the wick is too big, that's what we do. If you are familiar with ICD concepts, you will know. And we will go for 1 to 2 or 1 to, uh, 1 to 2.5. And let's see how this plays out. So the take profit level was hit. This was a beautiful algorithmic trade, right? Even though the uh, first target was hit, you could have moved your stop to break even, took like partials, let's say 40%, 30%, and then you let the runners until 2.5 or even three risk to reward ratio. Now, this is very simple. If you guys want to learn more about this strategy, there are a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can watch my recent video and uh, I will link the videos in the description. You can check them out if you want to learn more example. If you want to see like more examples, uh, this should be it, guys. I'll see you guys next weekend and happy holidays and happy New Year's in advance. Goodbye for now.